All right, so this trade between the Celtics and the Thunder, super interesting. Um, you know, initially when I saw the trade, I was sitting here and I was like, you know, I actually think that the um, I think the Thunder got the better deal because while you know the Celtics get off of their situation of having to you know, continue to pay Kemba when he just wasn't as good as he should have been for them. Um, you know, while that happened, well, that was initially my thought. I was thinking about it and I looked and I was like, oh my gosh, uh, Al Horford actually, his contract, not next season, but the season after, takes a little bit of a dip. Um, it's non-guaranteed for the um, the 2022 through 23 season, which is huge because maybe it's tradable, but it's also not hurting your cap as much. So I actually, for now, I don't really sit here and say, oh, the Thunder or the Celtics win the trade today because we don't know. I mean, you know, Kemba, you know, you knock on wood, but you hope that no injuries come out of anything. But, like, obviously if there's an injury, then, like, you traded players for no production, right? So I'm not going to sit here and say somebody won the trade. What I am going to say is, is that both teams made the right deal and a deal that helps them in the future. Uh, the Celtics, let's cover them first. So the Celtics get Al Horford back, who I think was definitely something that they liked to have when when he was there initially. Um, his ability to stretch the floor, his ability to be a passer. No one's going to expect him to score a bunch of buckets, but you definitely like to have kind of a savvy veteran on your team like that. Um, and I, for one, I, I think Horford is good he can again stretch the floor as well like he's he's a smart player so i don't really worry about that and i don't feel it's not like he's going to be a guy who's going to log a bunch of minutes for them um you know the the core of the celtics still very much is jalen brown and jason tatum um so yeah i mean the celtics i think did a good job of being able to get him the underappreciated thing and kind of the one thing i kind of was you know, raise my eyebrow with the deal is the fact that the Thunder traded Moses Brown as well. Uh, Moses Brown had some a, a pretty good second half of the season for the Thunder. And I understand that some of that comes with them being like, yeah, okay, we're just kind of, you know, throwing in the towel on the season. And so we're going to throw away or throw in a bunch of our good, you know, young assets that we have or young pieces. Um, Moses Brown, Darius Baisley, and other guys. And so Moses Brown was able to, I think, log some things. And I, I look, when you're as tall as Moses Brown, you're getting as much minutes as he is and, and wingspan, all those different things. I mean, I think you should, you definitely should be averaging 10 at 10. But what is his exact role on this team? Because now they have three front court players that, you know, while Horford can stretch the floor, I don't know if there's too much of a threat it's just too much home, too much front court players. So I do wonder about that. Um, the one thing also with this trade is the fact that, you know, they already have Robert Williams. I'm, I would have to, let's, I'm going to double check on the Mo Wagner situation. Um, because I don't know if, if he's under contract for sure, but ultimately I think the Celtics did the right thing. They get a guy who they know is proven in their system to be able to kind of do what he needs to do and and be a good fit. Um, This also kind of opens the door a little bit for them retaining Evan Fournier. Um, Look, if I'm Fournier, I don't know what exactly attracts me to the Celtics because you already have two other wing performers on the team with Tatum and Brown and you know when Marcus Smart is feeling it like he even is a guy who can you know at least is going to handle the ball I mean I saw an article saying that they should promote uh Marcus Smart to to the point guard position what okay have fun with that I mean you can look like how the Jazz looked like without Mike Conley um yeah, I mean, they traded earlier in the season for for some pieces. 
Um, they were able to, they got rid of um, the Celtics, that is, got, you know, they, they don't have Daniel Tice anymore. But, uh, yeah, it was a... Uh, it it's it's a weird situation for the Celtics because they have a little bit f- too much front court help now. But again, that's not like the end of the world, I guess. But uh, one thing to keep your eye on because like Moses Brown, Al Horford, and Robert Williams all being able to get minutes in Boston, I just don't think is a realistic thing. Um, you play fantasy sports, basketball. I mean, I don't know. This definitely hurts Robert Williams, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it, it it will be interesting. I mean, I don't. I definitely don't think this is a trade where Boston's like, oh, we could flip Horford again. But you know, no, Horford will be on the team and will be playing and starting the first game of next season. Um, let's jump over to the Thunder side of it. Um, so the Thunder acquire Kemba Walker, who last year you look at his numbers and you're kind of like, okay, not terrible, right? Like, like you you look at. You look at Kemba Walker's numbers and you're like, okay, he's 19 points, five assists. You look at his effective field goal percentage, it's still over 50, which is pretty ideal. Um, but the issue becomes his is the fact that he just couldn't be – he's not healthy. He wasn't healthy going into last year. And, you know, he's going to be 31. He's a guy who already – is kind of smaller. He's not even 200 pounds. He's six foot. Like he, it's it's hard for these guys to be able to last long in the NBA. And there's no quality of Kemba. Like he's quick. He's speedy a little bit, very quick. But there's no part of him that's like, oh man, he's like an athletic beast and he could definitely overcome injuries. Cardiac Kemba ain't like that. Um, but I do feel like for people who think that the Thunder are like, oh, they acquired an old point guard. What are they doing? I mean, look, they got the 18th pick in the draft. So they, they load up on the the um, some draft capital. But um, I don't think that Kemba starts the year with them. I think there's a way that they could technically still trade him to another team. Now, I don't think that's going to happen before next, like before the off season, like this trade, like this trade comes out of nowhere. Like the playoffs aren't even over. We already have a trade. Um, So yeah, that's weird. Um, But I do, I do looking at kind of the thunder situation, you know, Kemba doesn't necessarily, I think fit there the greatest. Um, I mean, veteran presence, a guy who's played in the league, maybe he can help, um, the young Shea Gilgis Alexander kind of broadened his game a little bit. But for the most part, I think there's a way that the Thunder could say, we're going to trade him again. And when we trade him again, we're going to just continuously get maybe a better player. Or, I mean, because do, do you believe, I mean, for people listening, do you believe that the Thunder have the assets to be able to go and get Bradley Beal? Absolutely. 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 They have so many picks in this year's draft and future drafts. Um, they could use one of their core, like, young little pieces of, you know, again, Darius Baisley, Isaiah Roby, you know, any any of these young guys. And then they, they, they potentially could get two picks in the top five. If the lottery goes their way, it will be super interesting to see what happens there. Um, But, yeah, we will we will see what this Thunder, has in, this Thunder team has in store. I look. Sam Presti and that Thunder front office, they know what they're doing. I know it stinks that they were, if you're a Thunder fan, like you go to the finals with the big three and then you lose Harden and then, you know, there's a couple of injuries to both Durant and Westbrook. And then you kind of are at full strength again, but then you lose blowing a three, one lead to the Warriors and then Kevin Durant leaves. And then the whole Paul George situation happens or really the year without Durant and it's just the Westbrook show was fun, but they don't really do anything in the playoffs. And then after that, you bring in Paul George, but then that was a mess that ended at the hands of the Jazz and and you know and a rookie Donovan Mitchell, and uh, and you know it just it just wasn't ever like it's good because you're still making the playoffs and you know not this year. And then you know last year even. You know, Chris Paul comes in after the Westbrook trade and leads them to the game seven of the first round, which nobody even thought they were going to make the playoffs anyway. So, hey, 
Thunder fans, I, I understand what it feels like um, to be down in the dumps about as far as the team performance, but they have a plan. Thunder have a plan. They essentially, when trading, like, does everybody, like, as, as bad as Kemba was last year, do people think that he is worse than Al Horford was? Like, or what Al Horford is? Like, who has more? I think Boston trades for traded for fit. Like, he fits Boston. But he doesn't necessarily, I don't think he's a better player than Kemba, even, even injured Kemba. Um, so I think the Thunder's game plan is like, we're going to continue to trade for these bad contracts and then maybe we'll be able to break right and be able to make the salary work to get a big player. Or we just continue to hold on to these guys and try to trade, trade and trade and trade, um, see what we can do. I think it was the right move for the Thunder. Um, a little surprised that they threw in Moses Brown, but Hey, I mean, they very well could land Evan Mobley. And if they get another big, they can get land Jalen Green and Evan Mobley. I mean, could you imagine that for the Thunder next year? Crazy. Um, and that kind of make that fast tracks their rebuild so much if they were able to get two for, two top 10 picks. So that will be interesting. Draft lottery is on Tuesday. I am going to actually um, live stream it um, and we'll see what happens. But oh man, oh man, this will be an interesting one. And all eyes are on the Thunder. Could you imagine being a Houston Rockets fan? And being as bad as you were this year and you're losing your star player and just having an awful team and had some injuries this year too. Could you imagine all that is for nothing as far as their draft position goes this year? You do not have it. It goes to the Thunder and you just sit there on draft night if you even care to watch it anyway and you just say, wow, we are really screwed. Houston's a whole topic in and of themselves, but... Hey, Thunder Celtics, I think they both did a good solid thing. Um, again, I don't announce winners because you can't really announce winners on trades. I thought both teams did something that I thought that they would do. Celtics want to kind of build and have their own culture, have a guy, one of their own guys that succeeded in Boston, be back there, and then the Thunder get a better player, even though it's on a bad contract and potentially could move him again, get more assets. Stay tuned to what both of these teams are doing. It will be an interesting offseason for both of them. For now, both of them get a good grade. A thumbs up from me. Come on. Good job. Hats off to the Thunder and the Celtics. We'll see what happens. It should be a very interesting offseason summertime.